Hi, everyone. I'm Antonia. This is Kate. We are delighted to be here from the Walt Disney Family Museum's Education Department and couldn't be more thrilled to be a part of the closing keynote here at what was an amazing conference. Thank you, Q, and all of you. Um, we have some sort of special um, outreach initiatives we want to share with you today because they're available to teachers and to you. And really what we do as educators at the Walt Disney Family Museum uh, is inspired by the legacy of Walt Disney and his studio and the technological innovations that they worked on in Walt's lifetime. And today we're going to look at two specifically. The first is very small, and you may have seen Spheros rolling around the conference today. I saw them in the cafeteria, Sphero robots, and also is a part of the steampunk playground. We are using Sphero robots, and you might be thinking to yourself, Walt Disney robots, what? I ask students all the time, why would we be using robots? They start thinking about cartoons, they think about theme parks and rides, but rarely do they think about Walt's audio animatronics. So this was a term that was coined in 1961. It was trademarked by 1967. And between then and now, we have gone from the A1 model up to the A100 model. So what you're looking at, you're looking at Walt with what is basically a robotic parrot. That was used for his enchanted tiki room attraction and restaurant. You can see that we have a version of that we call Pepe at the Presidio. That's in our galleries there on the right-hand side. So Walt really thought about these as robots. And in fact, before he passed, he was quoted as saying, you know what my next project is going to be? An audio animatronic nurse. So we have today robotic surgeons that are performing surgeries in hospitals around the world. And we don't expect our students to do surgeries, but a certain amount of precision is necessary to work with these robots and the curriculum that we at the Walt Disney Family Museum have designed in response to the Sphero robots. So here we have a student at PA Walsh. It's a STEAM Academy out in Morgan Hill, and she is working on calculating the exact trajectory, the angles and geometry that she needs to use to get her robot to follow the paths that we've designed. They look like this. And so they have a worksheet, and they have a protractor, and of course they have us if they raise their hands, but there's a lot of teamwork and a lot of um, creative problem solving that's going on in order to get these robots to do what they need to do in as few moves as possible. Think about mini golf, right? You don't want to have a penalty point. You want to get your robot from point A to point B in one stroke. But we also remember that Walt Disney was all about art, and so we have a STEAM philosophy at our museum, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And so here, we are tasking students to create an abstract expressionist canvas together. Kate, would you? It is just the ittiest bittiest little video, so you can get a sense of how the robots do the painting. So yes, these robots are completely submerged in paint before going down into, that is really a guinea pig pen. And we've done that so that the paint doesn't end up all around the classroom. And so this is a free initiative to teachers. So if you're within about a 100 mile radius of our museum, you should reach out. We're going to be taking applications in January to become a partner school with us. So we can be doing outreach like this in your classroom. And we can be doing outreach using uh, the next initiative, the multiplane camera, and I'm going to turn it over to Kate to talk about that. Click it, please. Thank you. Okay, so you can see the original multiplane camera behind Walt Disney there. Um, obviously, it's much taller than what you could probably have in your classroom, and it was invented in the 1930s to create more realistic depth in animation. Um, so there are multiple levels there where the artwork goes, and the camera is on top, the down shooter, and so um, as it goes, at the different layers can create different depth, and you can see how that would be much better than one flat piece of paper, which is how animation was created before. 
This is our tabletop version, and this is kind of the DIY version that we take out to schools. You can see it's just plexiglass and cups, so this is something that you could come up with in your classroom. And you don't even have multiple layers there. Um, I don't know if you can see there's an iPad all the way on the top layer, so even if you just have one layer of plexiglass so that the iPad is sitting still and the students can animate underneath that, underneath where the iPad is sitting. Uh, but with the multiple layers, it does allow for that depth and animation that Walt created. If I were doing this in my classroom, I would start with storyboarding. Storyboarding is how animators in Walt's time started their films, and filmmakers today still use storyboards. This is one that I created to, ha um, to pair with um, Newton's laws of motion. So I've got a rocket sitting still, it's ready to launch. On my next storyboard frame, the engines are started, flames are shooting out the bottom of the rocket. Then the power of the engines overpowers gravity. We have liftoff, and of course, if my students were doing this, I would wanna make sure that they can correlate their animation to the actual principle, the scientific principle that we're learning. And then they would create an animation. I do have one sample student animation for you. This was created by a group of fourth grade students and they were studying animal adaptations. You can go ahead and play. So this is a sperm whale and they are illustrating that the sperm whale has adapted the ability to dive deep in order to hunt. Well, there it is having its fight with the squid and eats the squid and then it comes back to the surface. So they created that on a multi-plane camera and you may have seen that the whale got bigger and smaller at certain points. So we are going to demonstrate um, animation for you and I know this looks like it's for a big reveal purpose but really it's because of the lighting. We are avoiding reflections on our screen. And this is our, thank you very much. Um, this is our version that we use in-house at the museum. You can see a student working on one here, and he's actually working on animating mitosis. And um, just a few tips, Antonia's gonna go through a demonstration with you, but animation, um, the industry standard is 24 frames per second, 24 photographs per second, so you can imagine how quickly that goes. And um, the smaller the character's movements are, the more smooth the animation will be. I'll turn it over to you, Antonia. Thank you. So this morning, it occurred to me that maybe it would be more interesting uh, for you all to get involved rather than having me show you how to do this. And I think the idea of failing forward is very popular right now. So let's find somebody who hasn't done any stop motion animation before. Raise your hand if you've never done any stop motion animation. Ooh, okay, I've got one right here. And I'm gonna take two people, so let's see. And how about the gentleman just in that second, second section there? Yes, you with, yes, the magenta colored shirt. I'm gonna have you both come on down. And you're gonna need to go around the outside in order to get up on stage. Yes, Nick, could you turn the theater lights down? Thank you. You two are gonna have to make do with our underwater scene. Now you'll notice that I have not set these props up in any particular fashion because I want you both to make some decisions about what you want your animation background to look like. And we do have these three layers for you to utilize. So think about it in terms of foreground, middle ground, and background. And I'm gonna step aside, I'm here as your guide, but why don't you get in here and start by just setting up where you want your background pieces. We have a red sort of piece of sponge. We have two waves. We also have some green seaweed. And a jellyfish. The jellyfish is our main character, and you'll notice that the jellyfish has two parts. So we do encourage our students to use moving parts when animating. We're keeping it simple here. We just have a top and a bottom, but it should allow for some oscillation in the water. And now I will ask our volunteers, what, what's your name? Uh, Noe. Okay. And Julie. Thank you, Noe and Jui. Now take a look up here, make sure that everything's in frame because when we're animating, it's, we are capturing what you're seeing on the screen. So you may wanna make some adjustments. I love that you're utilizing the layers. 
Now start thinking about what you're going to want to do with your character. How is your character going to move? And we encourage you to have your character move naturally, maybe from one plane to the next, so that we can see that character sort of progress through space. This is the magic of the multiplane camera. Great. Okay, so it looks like we've got our jellyfish in the background. And do you guys have a plan for how, what you're gonna do? Now remember, if it's 24 frames per second, we're gonna have to take a lot of pictures. So Kate's gonna take two pictures really per every movement. And that way we're gonna be getting a little bit longer, um, a little longer animation than we would if she just took one. And we're gonna wanna keep our movements very, very small. So that way it doesn't feel overly jumpy when we actually hit play. We are using iStop Motion. That's the name of this app or this software. So start making your movements. Why don't I pass the mic to you, okay? And then you tell Kate when you want a picture taken, okay? Okay. We're gonna move it. Yeah, we'll move it. All right, shoot. The mic just okay. All right, and uh, move it again. You might want to move that one a little bit. Okay, go ahead, take a picture. Okay. All right, move it again. And maybe this time move the grass and that red thing too, a little bit. All right, Ooh. ready? Yeah. And okay. then, uh, are the hands in there? Can you see the hand? Oh no, you can't. All right, let's move the squid again, or that animal. <laughs> All right, and shoot. All right, let's do it again. Move that one. So just to let you all know while they're working on this, we're using an app called iStop Motion. All right, shoot. Okay. Right. And I'm taking two photos Same every again. time they ask me to move. The way I'm doing that is by pressing the space bar. And then maybe move this one that way. And then go ahead and shoot. All right, let's move that one again. Good. Move this backwards. All right, shoot. All right. Oh, good. Oh, good idea, yeah. Make the waves. All right, go ahead and shoot. Okay. All right. We have about three quarters of a second right now. Oh. That's it. You're doing a great That's job. It. Keep going. All right. So, so audience, this, this blue bar here shows where we are so far in the animation. Oh my goodness. Here's one second, two seconds, et cetera. So I think we should We're just speed there. up and just go fast, Want me to take I another guess. one? All right, um, shoot. Your hands, up. there we go. Shoot. 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 Oh, we're, we've got a second, I think, folks. Shoot. Should, should we watch Shoot. what we've got so far? Yeah. Okay. And you can see, there we go. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Woo! Thanks for thank you up. to you both. Thank you, thank you. Thanks. You can go ahead and sit back down. That was great. Yeah, our time is up. Um, I do want to, however, tell you that this kit is for rent. So um, you can borrow this from us. If you want to do that, though, you do have to come and visit us because you have to pick it up. Um, but that means that you get to see our beautiful grounds on the Presidio and the Golden Gate Bridge. So please come and visit us. And if you're interested in any of those outreach initiatives that I discussed earlier, please email us. Kate, if you would, one more slide. Um, here's our emails. We're going to be over there later for questions, though. Thank you.